at the beginning of the blog site. It's called the 13th Monkey, the 13th Monkey dot blogspot dot com. Here's what it says. Massive dangers ahead from the CERN Large Hadron Collider and its implications in our future. Now, here's the part that I wanted to say in the beginning. What is happening is something more than that. Now the blog um, it seems to be extremely uh, scientific, technolo- you know, you know, tech oriented, and I'll, I'll get to that in a moment. But here's what he says: He says um, that it's all about uh, the discovery of the God particle, and he answers this: No, what is happening is something more than that, much more, much more secretive, and much more concerning. This is the Ragged Edge Radio Broadcast. Like I said yesterday, I would finish up. Yesterday we began this um, you know, del- you know, delving into CERN and September and would it be this month. Well, it's not going to be this month. The abyss opens, but could CERN on the 23rd open portholes and do what it was really designed to do? Yes, it can. So the 13th Monkey blogspot.com says it this way. Uh, concerning CERN. It's not about the God, God particle. It is much more, more secretive and more, more concerning. Ragged Edge Radio Broadcast, this is Russ Dizdar. On this Thursday night, we are at part, um, well, literally now at part four uh, of the kind of series on this September. If you go back and listen, if you go to shatterthedarkness.net, you can go to the archives. Look over to the right, you'll see where it says current archives. And we did yesterday the September chaos CERN will it open the abyss? Uh, we did the earlier one uh, this week the Pope religion or reality saved or unsaved, and then we did the earliest one number one the the reasons and other issues concerning the September chaos. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of the week, we were up to um, at one point twenty some different things converging on September. Then a list was put out of 27, then a list of 20, 33, then a list of 35, and then eventually began to call, you know, count over 40 different uh, convergences of anything from asteroids to economic collapse to CERN uh, occurring to uh, war breaking out, martial law, and all the rest. So I looked at all of those, still noticing, because of the end of days, the dark side's presence and its operating power is the causes for all of the coming collapses, well, and all of the events that will bring the world to the brink, to the brink, listen, to the brink, it'll feel like extinction. So as we look at all of this, is it all going to happen in one month? No. So there's a sequence of biblical prophecy. That was the important thing I was bringing out the other day, is that it's more than just uh, the accumulation of events, uh, the, the possibilities. I mentioned uh, also the blood moon issues, the um, Shimata, the, even the Torah codes. So I want to go back just to Scripture where prophetic insight is given. And I want to say to you that the most powerful, insightful, clear, and actual uh, descriptions of future events come in biblical prophecy. That's what uh, we see in Matthew 24 and what Jesus is relating to. This is why we were given so much insight to the end of days in the book of Daniel 2,600 years ago. And this continues in the book of Thessalonians, Second Thessalonians, First John, throughout the rest of Scripture, of course in the Gospels, and the heavy chapter of Matthew 24. And then you come to the book Yesu Christu Apocalypse, the Apocalypse of Jesus Christ. Now that is the unveiling, uh, the uh, visible return issue. The the kind of culmination is Revelation 19. There are so many things that are going to happen. One of the most incredible books in the Bible that, um, I mean, just overwhelmingly, the majority of its content is all prophetic. Because in it we have not only the... um, the white, the the Antichrist, the false prophet, the beast system, the Babylon Babylon uh, spiritual system, the two witnesses, the opening of the abyss, Armageddon, the return of Christ, the binding of Satan in uh, the abyss a thousand years, 
the second resurrection, the great white throne judgment, the glorification of believers seeing God face to face. So it's huge. It's just absolutely huge. And I recommend that when you do study the book of Revelation, you know, cling to what you understand in the beginning. Keep holding to what is very clear and what is very assured, and just keep studying along with the rest of it, it, There was no one book to, be, to give everything. So it's really accumulation of biblical prophecy that, that paints the picture. It's like having uh, pieces of a puzzle. You have a hundred piece, uh, you go out and buy a box that has a hundred pieces and you find one piece and you find another that goes with it, another goes with it, another goes with it. And in real sense, you can go to the Old Testament prophecies. And again, I point to Daniel specifically. You go to the Gospels and then go to the rest of Scripture all the way to Revelation. And what happens is, is when you're studying diligently, searching and looking, here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to fit pieces of it in an abnormal sense, in a way that it shouldn't be. You don't want that to happen at all. What you want is them to easily, and I, I believe this, I believe that when it comes to prophecy and you're looking at it consistently, systematically, over and over again, uh, that it begins to be put together, uh, all the pieces of uh, the prophetic biblical uh, intel fits. And the more you know, and the more you put together, the larger the picture. You begin to see the picture. You begin to see the details of the picture. And that biblical prophecy will give you insight. What is God going to do? And that is the hallelujah. That is uh, what we read in Revelation 4, or 19 rather, four hallelujahs. I mean, there is uh, such uh, declarations. God is sovereign. These thing, uh, prophecies are infallible. They're irrevocable. Uh, this is real human history as it actually will occur, down to the details of the feelings and the words and responses of the human race. All the contingencies, everything that could, all the possibilities, biblical prophecy brings about the actuality. So you're looking at actual future history, the way it will actually occur. So th that's why I'm saying the constant looking, there is nothing superior to biblical prophecy. What God has given, the Spirit of God has given, the collective sense of it, uh, putting them together, painting the picture. Uh, there is out there those who crunch the numbers, those who use technologies, those who just look at the trends, uh, those who guess and bet on things. And then there's the counterfeit, the um, satanic, uh, the, the demonic, uh, prophetic uh, counterfeit. Literally, I, I've looked at over the years the writings or the uh, statements of the psychics and others where the finite spirits are giving what seems to be prophecy, even in Nostradamus and in Casey, Edgar Casey and the rest, and in now modern-day remote viewers. Here's what I see. They're not giving so much prophecy because the even the collective of fallen demons and angels, uh, they're not infinite. They're higher in their abilities than man, but they can't scratch the surface of the beginning of the infinite, immeasurable nature of God. God doesn't sit in the past pointing to the future. He's on the other side of the future. He's on the other side of the past. He's before the beginning, and um, he's way out there beyond the end of this fallen world system. So as we see what God gives, he's given the intel of all possible contingencies, all of the, what if I do this? What if I do that? What if this happens? What if that happens? What if this goes on? Biblical prophecy comes down to the actuality. It's the intel of how these things will come down. And I think that's what's important when we look at everything. Uh, the other stuff is interesting. The other stuff is uh, stuff that we look at, especially if we're going to expose evil deeds of darkness when it comes to counterfeit or satanic prophecy. Yesterday I talked about Alice Bailey. About 21 volumes guided by a specific you know, demonic entity, uh, an ascended master, a Tibetan, they called it. But again, you've got now tens of millions worldwide influenced by it. The entire UN sits on the spiritual teachings of that and the New Age. And it's all not prophecy, but declarations of the demonic realm themselves. 
It's what they're saying is going to happen. It's, it's part of their plot, part of their plan. Now, what I do is um, I step back. It's like in the year of deliverance. Over the years, we've done a lot of deliverance. We've heard demons speak many, many different times. But I want you to know something. I want to listen to the Spirit of God. I want to have the Word of God. Demons will lie. Demons are masters. There, there's a supernatural ability they have and the, the nature they have as far as deception. So you got to always go back to the Word of God. No matter what is said, no matter how you feel, no matter what they push. I mean, when they get in people, when they channel through people, when people uh, inquire of them, when people throw, you know, any occult means that involves dark side, finite spirits being operative, well, you can be sure they're going to give stuff that's going to dazzle hearts, unaided minds and hearts. But it's always going to be about their agenda. I always see the, the, the demonic side doing two things. One, uh, clouding individuals and preoccupying and, and uh, distracting and keeping them from God. On the other side of that, drawing them into the agenda to be used. It seems as though they don't want to just bring about deception alone. They want maybe tens of thousands, maybe millions to be actually uh, used in the promotion of, in the accomplishment of its agenda. And here's the problem with um, intel agencies, military, governments, uh, in all of their threat analysis and the rest. When they do, listen, when they look at their crunching of the numbers and their, uh, their technologies and their spying and all the rest, they have a lot more information than the rest of the planet. But it doesn't scratch the surface of what God says is going to happen. So this is why I want you to say, you to know, that um, knowing biblical prophecy will cut through all of the speculation. It will clearly give a uh, uh, black and white picture to what is the, of the spirit of truth and what is coming from the spirit of error. And that's important. First John 4, uh, we should be able to recognize the spirit of error, the spirit of Antichrist, obviously, and the elements uh, what are the um, evidences of the spirit of air, the finite spirits, the demons, the fallen angels, and all that they're doing, whether they're doing it in the heavenlies with the uh, ufologists and the, um, and the alienologists, or they're doing it uh, corporately on a global scale, layering the earth with the deception in the preparation for the events that will alter everything so quick, so fast, uh, nobody's going to be able to even write a book about it. I mean, that's that's how the sequence of the end will come down when it does come down. Uh, they they truly do. Uh, they're, they're they're truly bulging at the seams. But here's the key, and this is why I'm going to mention this tonight: the restrainer. We'll take a look at it in Second Thessalonians two in a few moments. Give me a moment to tell you. This is Russ Dizda, the Ragged Edge Radio Broadcast. ShatterTheDarkness.net is the primary website. And if you go there, you're going to see a lot of things. Scroll down a little bit. Nephilim Mounds 3, the conference. We're over 450 coming. Did Newark, Ohio on September 12th and uh, 13th. By the way, I'll be on with Ellie Marzulli tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I think Chief uh, Joseph and possibly Gary Stearman is also going to be in on that one hour talking about this upcoming conference. And I, I believe we'll probably hit 500 or more by the time it's all said and done, but we want you to know that registration now can only be done by PayPal online or at the door. And if you register prior, of course, there's a discount. But uh, that, is, uh, that is coming up very shortly. Now, on our website, there's conferences. Cincinnati, an outreach, uh, impact outreach that we're going to do in Allentown, Pennsylvania at the end of this month, the 25th, 26th. We'd love to invite you to come to Pennsylvania in Allentown and also to Cincinnati in the beginning of October. We're going to be in Columbus uh, we've been invited by the Mennonite Missionary uh, Training School to come and speak there on spiritual warfare. And then we have um, Idaho coming up in January and California. Looks like now California late February 2016. Glad you're here. Take a look at the um, free courses, the training materials. If you're coming to Nephilim Mounds 3, you might want to get a hold of the first two. 
Giants Hiding in Plain Sight. The second one was called Giants Revealing the Agenda of the Fallen Cherub. One has three DVDs. One has five three DVDs uh, from the, the, the prior conferences. And I'm going to ask uh, thousands of you if you will pray for us and pray for this conference and pour out your prayers because there's, I, I believe this, and I told L.A., and, I, and, and all those that have, um, all of those that I've looked at, whether that has been Steve Quayle or Tom Horn or many, many others that have, that have been really way out there in front of everybody uh, studying on the subject and looking into the subject because it is part of the agenda of the dark side. It's, it's what they own when it comes to Nephilim. It's, it's their stuff. It seems as though a heightened level of spiritual warfare. I mean, like they're really territorial over the subject. And it's almost as though they don't want any exposure of the, let alone the past issues of the Nephilim and Giants, of its connection with science and technology and transhumanism and the underworld of the occult, Jack Parsons, Kroll. They don't want that. And they don't want anybody to find out in biblical prophecy that it's most likely um, hybrids will be on the earth and the Antichrist and the false prophet may be very clearly hybrid beings. I don't think they want this to be known at all. I think this is part of the secret, 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 supernatural secret side of the dark side. Talk about that when you get to 2 Thessalonians 2 concerning the Mysterium, the Mysterium, the real Luciferian. That's the real, if you want to talk about the Illuminati, that's the real Illuminati there in 2 Thessalonians 2. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Before we get there, I wanted to touch on a few things, breaking news, because I saw some things that were just, um, and we love to do this once in a while, but we have, um, we have uh, the Washington Metro Chief uh, safety officer resigns in wake of the investigation into the derailment near the Smithsonian. Now, when I saw the Smithsonian, we have, um, I'm going to say this, I think we have some inside help. And I'm going to just throw it out there again that we would like to uh, um, see that inside help help us. Smithsonian. Has there been a cover-up concerning the Giants? If so, where's all the bones? Where's all the information? Where, where do they take everything? If so, is it because that it smacks in the face of evolution, Darwin, and so forth? Or is there an occult level? Is there a, a, a dark order there that is... Um, once you remember when um, Michael, you know, debated with Satan. I mean, they, they engaged each other, Book of Jude, over the bones of Moses. Right now, you could imagine when it comes to the bones of the uh, of the Nephilim, and uh, if you understand undergrounders, what a power object that would be. Let alone the possibilities and technology to clone, uh, and or other uses in rituals using Nephilim bone DNA, skulls, and the rest. Another uh, point to mention tonight, because of what's happening all across the United States, specifically police, corrections officer taken to hospital after being shot in Yakima, Washington. Police are converging on the area right now. Officials say that an inmate found dead at Santa Clara County, California, jail died from internal bleeding due to blunt force trauma. Three officers charged in the death. Whether the stories are coming out everywhere that we have not been hearing about or just everything is escalating. Another one here in San Jose. Police, San Jose, California, correctional deputies are the reason behind the brutal murder of the inmate is what this one says. And it goes on. We, we look at the, you look at the political landscape and it's just absolutely um, chaotic. It speaks of the times. It really does. Let's go to CERN. We did this a little bit yesterday because I want to talk about CERN and other technologies because CERN is not the only, I mean, the, the big one, uh, the Hadron Collider, is one of among, among a number of them the world over, let alone HARP and other things that may have an impact. Now, Jesus spoke about in Matthew 24. What's the first thing? Think about it now because... 
I'm always, I mean, for years and years and years, it, it seemed like everybody nixed the very first words out of Jesus' mouth. The number one thing when it comes to the end of days, because they were asking him, when, when's the end of the age and you're coming? So we're talking about the very end and his return. And the first thing Jesus does is say, he, he warns of the spiritual deception, the false Christs. He warns that don't let anybody deceive you. So I'm going to say again, because um, all of the end deals with the broadest, thickest, most operative satanic, demonic, manifested presence. It can't happen otherwise. It's the fuel, the presence, the power behind all of what's going to happen in the end. All of the events we're going to talk about have um, either the satanic side and its powers, or when God steps in, his presence and powers, like with the two witnesses, and like in the second coming of Christ himself. But again, that was prophesied. If we knew the piece of the puzzle of biblical prophecy in Daniel, we would know that the Antichrist and the rise of this final, um, this final uh, terrorizing empire, global empire, doesn't come about by human hands which is a reference to the power behind all of it. And it will not come down by human hands, human power, which also gives you know the picture of Re- Revelation 19. It comes down by the power and presence directly in the return of Christ. So when we look at the biblical prophecy and we need to look at the language, we need to look at the details over and over, like in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 10, verse 11, May those two verses be part of what you're all about. Part of what anybody who's watching, every mom, every dad, every student, everyone who loves the Lord, everybody who's under the Lordship of Christ, because prophecy will help purify your life. It'll help just, I mean, literally put your life ablaze for God, for Christ, in the amazement of God's accuracy, sovereignty, power in His work. But it's also going to fuel you to be pure in this walk of your, you, you know, your walk in the end of days here, and uh, to be used in evangelism. To use to be in the, in the context of evangelism, uh, because the time is short, the devil knows that, and and so we ramp up evangelism. We use biblical prophecy to explain to the rest of the world what's going on, like what Peter did, Acts chapter one. Uh, the power of the Spirit of God comes, Pentecost occurs, Peter stands up, filled with the Spirit of God, gets everybody to listen to him, and he says, you know, this is that which the prophet Joel spoke about. So the literal, exact fulfillment of that prophecy just occurred, and um, Peter was able, because that prophecy was in him, he knew the scripture, the prophet, the prophetic side, and he was able to get up by the Spirit of God and declare that the fulfillment of that prophecy of Joel just, um, just occurred. And I believe that's true when we look at the rest of prophecy, because it's so literal, it's so clear, it's what some have called the plain language of prophecy. And yet we look at Revelation and we see the apocalyptic language. Yet again, I believe it's written um, as we look over it again and again and again, like the prophets of old with um, investigating prophecy to look for the signs of the times of the second coming and the end of the age. Look what the aid, you know what the prophets had in the Old Testament when they looked at prophecy, when they were doing it? It was um, the Spirit of Christ. In your study of biblical prophecy, you know the, you know the thing that, that really puts me ablaze? Is the Spirit of Christ. The living Spirit of the Holy Spirit uh, who, who, who's, who's, um, who's given the infallible you know, word. Uh, he's attending to it. And he'll help you in that discovery. Over and over and over and over the old prophets would go, uh, looking for the times and circumstances. And so over and over and over again we should go with the same Spirit of God that guided them in the first coming to look for us in the second coming. So First Peter chapter 1, verse 10 to 11, take a look at that and um, let that be an inspiration. I, I really believe an inspiration. Now on the website, 13th Monkey blogspot.com 
This is a couple years old, well, a year and a half or so old. 13 Monkey says um, this. What's happening is something more than that, much more, much more secretive and more concerning. Now, I'm going to read some of the kind of tech stuff they've got here, but I want you to hear what... Um, you know, their view, uh, looking at uh, some of the secret issues concerning the Hadron Collider. Why is it big? Well, it's it's, it's one of the, the largest. I mean, I went over the facts yesterday, some of the facts yesterday. The beams of the Hadron protons are accelerated in opposite directions to more than 99.9999% of the speed of light. Powerful superconducting magnets chilled to the temperature colder than deep space then blend the beams so that the streams of particles collide within four large chambers. Listen to this next one. The smash-ups fleetingly generate temperatures 100,000 hotter than the sun replicating the conditions that prevailed just after the Bing Bang that created the universe. That's what they say. Above ground farm, 3,000 computers, one of the largest in the world, instantly crunches the number down to about uh, 100 collisions that are of the most interest to them. They're talking about peak uh, Hadron Collider uh, 14... Terra electron volts, TEVs. I mean, this is this is astounding. Is it is it earth shaking? Can it create earthquakes? You remember Jesus, Matthew twenty four. Watch out, nobody deceives you. The false, you know, deception is number one. The false Christ and the rest and so forth. Uh, wars, rumors of wars, and what else? Earthquakes. Part of the end of days is earthquakes. Yesterday, I read an article when. Uh, somebody was studying the um, when when the when the Hadron Collider was turned on. The results were two huge earthquakes, a number of other 6.0s around the world, 10,000 dead, and that article was uh, maybe saying, "Hey, maybe this 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 um, collider had something to do with that." Can you have something that hot, that powerful, that massive um, cause earthquakes? Can the technologies being developed to help bring some of the environmental issues that we see written about in Scripture? Because when you read the rest of the book of Revelation, the environment comes to almost an extinction level event when the abyss is opened. Well, the sun and the moon is blacked out. The entities coming out of the abyss. God has to sovereignly, listen, limit what destruction they can do And he limits their ability to bring destruction, final destruction, to the earth. You know, one thing neat about biblical prophecy is that it tells you how the earth will not end. It will not end in a massive, uh, you know, world war, nuclear holocaust um, destroying the entire planet. It will not end by, you know... Uh, massively sized comets, asteroids hitting the earth and uh, throwing everything into ex- extinction. Do we have the issue of something coming from space and hitting the planet? Wormwood, yes. Do we have the um, issues of uh, uh, extinction level events, one third of the earth, one third of the waters and so forth? Sure. The end of days are so catastrophic. Jesus said it's off the charts of human history. It's never occurred before, but it is coming. And what's to come is so astounding that, uh, well, people are just going to, the idea is that some will just die of fright. Men's hearts are going to fail them because of the devastations. Well, I go back to the blog spot, 13thmonkeyblogspot.com, and I wanted, to, I wanted to read you what it said. Because when I look at biblical prophecy, then I look at some of these individuals and scientists that are warning the world. Here's one of the warnings, quote, In the graphs developed in detail in different posts on this web, we show the three distinct life extinction events that the Hadron, Large Hadron Collider can cause. One is put online at double potency in 2015 over the 10 TeV barrier of dark matter. 
the theoretical minimal energy of formation of a bag of star of strangelets and the micro black holes. Now, I'm going to read this. If you want to take a look at it, it's again, 13th Monkey, blogspot.com. It's uh, 2013 slash 12 slash massive dangerous head for CERN. You'll find it. Here's what it says, quote, Creation of baby black holes that do not evaporate, either as top cork condensates, Einstein's famous frozen stars, or string stars, with higher dimensionality. Dimension, listen, when it comes down to the opening of dimensions, that's why there's so many saying that the ultimate reason for CERN and other technologies around the world like it is to open portholes. Whether the scientists involved winning or not, if they're really guided by the particular entity Shiva, bring the chaos so that a new order, so that a new a recreation can occur. Well, that fits in the occult plan. That fits in the satanic scheme. Chaos before the new order. It does. Well, the blog spotter here says that um, the collider, much more, much more secretive and much more concerning. That's what he says. Goes on to say this, the creation of strange lets lumps of strange quarks known to be very common in the universe as all pulsars seem to be frozen strange stars both type of frozen stars will be made at cern between 2015 and 2020 on collisions over 10 tevs 10 tev finally the minute listen uh, this is the important part of this um this information this, that i wanted to get to you Finally, the magnetic field of the Large Hadwin Collider, the strongest on the planet, which caused disturbances on the Earth's magnetic field, cause of earthquakes that have increased to record, record numbers. Similar, listen to what this, 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 this writer says, similar to those of the Second World War during the carpet bombing of the Pacific Seismic Ring of Fire since the machine was put online. Any of those three scenarios should have deterred CERN and its financial backers. Well, I'm just saying comment. It hasn't. So the the kind of technological, the kind of uh, tech-oriented, sci uh, science-oriented blogger here, 13 Monkey, says that uh, like the carpet bombing, like the earthquakes caused, like that in the Ring of Fire, that um, disturbances in the Earth's magnetic field, cause of earthquakes that have increased in number, and many others feel that much more, let alone the idea of the black holes being open and not being shut, let alone um, their own scientists saying that uh, the possibility of opening a black hole or something so vast they cannot shut that would be catastrophic to the whole planet. So those are their own warnings. So is there a reason why many other uh, prophecy teachers and warners and uh, and writers have uh, warned concerning the open the, the the CERN being turned on this month? Well, yes. Because when you do look at biblical prophecy, there are the causes behind the events. If earthquakes are a big you know, cause, and, and we see this all the way through the book of Revelation, earthquakes are a big issue when it comes to the days. Now, on the one hand, Romans 8, Romans 8, the actual decaying of the creation, subject to bondage, creation is sentient. It groans. But it also knows, K-N-O-W, it knows, it has information, it hopes, its creation's hope is placed in the second coming of Christ and the revelation, the glorification of the sons and children of God. Because a new heaven and a new earth, why do you think a new heaven and a new earth is coming? There is such destruction that's going to be um, uh, meted out, again, the feelings of extinction-level events. Now, you could read anybody on extinction-level events, whether it's war, whether it's comets, whether it's asteroids, whether it's nuclear, whether it's, uh, uh, well, the technologies. 
CERN being turned on, will it cause earthquakes? Will it create, um, as some feel, uh, some level of vibration that will affect the entire population of the world? That's how big the issue is. Let alone the fact that many are turning to saying that it is primarily going to be the tool used to open the abyss. Now, I talked about that yesterday, and I want to go over some things today that I think are very vital concerning. Could CERN be a tool the enemy has helped develop that he would use to open uh, the gateway to the abyss, which will be uh, a massive devastation to the population of the world who do not have the mark of God, who are not saved? The Those that are in trouble are going to be those who embrace the dark side's agenda, embrace the Antichrist, embrace the false prophet, embrace that system. So even when the dark side does and is the cause of the opening of the abyss, God limits what they can do. He protects the earth and he protects the people of God. Revelation 9. Here are details that God wants us to know, and probably close to the time that it all is going to occur, um, it's all going to make real clear sense. See, what makes sense to me is that Dr. Stephen Greer, uh, people from intelligence agencies from around the world, and many others, millions are involved in disclosure. They want the... Um, what they believe, the aliens, the Orions, the, um, the rest of them, they want them to come through. They are now, as they are gathering around the planet, it's what they call sacred spots, hot spots, uh, d- doorways, portholes, using occult means to, um, to connect with the entities, summoning them, feeling that they're being called. Listen, if you read the literature, I've read the literature, I've read the, um, I've read the reports of uh, the meetings at Shasta, at um, Joshua Tree and Sedona and other places around the world. Dr. Stephen Greer and others, and others are doing this in the Luciferic invocation, in the calling worldwide. You got to understand how large this is. It's been done in the United Nations building, Luciferic invocation. So the the guiding of you know millions of humans to be used to help summon and open gateways is one thing. But the issue of disclosure has come down to this. They now believe that, um, and I, when I read the transcripts of the occurrences from Dr. Stephen Greer's material, where they had used uh, meditation, telepathy, machinery, and other things to open the portholes and communicate with the entities uh, they call the Orions. And there's others. They not only believe that they have been spoken to, communicated with, and guided and chosen to bring, uh, that they're going to be used to bring the message to the planet. But they're going to help open the doorways for them to come in. And so uh, in the transcripts, they're declaring, multiple individuals are declaring that these entities, through the occult means, opening the doorways, that these beings are beginning to materialize visibly show up. Now, that's the issue of the abyss. When you read about Revelation 9, and again, Revelation 9 is huge, and again, we should be in front of all of this. May I say this, and it's a passion of mine, that biblical prophecy is such a uh, clarity of intel. It is so ahead of the times. You know, you look at the body of Christ, and sometimes you think it's 50 years behind in so many ways. And uh, there's no question the the dark sides fight against the body of Christ, fight against the Word of God. But it's vital that in the the looking at all of the possibilities, and again, I don't mind looking at uh, crunching numbers and technologies and possibilities. I've looked at blood moons and Shimada and uh, and Torah codes and all the rest. Let me tell you this. This is where I'm at. Uh, All of those things are shoved to the side for me. And I'm looking at uh, the sequence of biblical revelation prophetically. Simply put, prophetic revelation. And we're going to put more and more and more of that content on a website connected to ours that we built called prophecyprepared.com. 
so going to now this um, this um, this issue, I want you to hear that. Uh, and, and the only thing I've said about CERN is, can it be used to open the abyss? Sure, this could be a massive porthole gateway opener. I mean, it's, I mean, it's huge. And if you have the entity Shiva behind all of this, it makes sense. Chaos before a new recreation, right? And uh, if if that entity and others guided this entire project, then then truly from beginning to end, this is a technology of the fallen cherub, technology of um, you could say the gods small g, CERN, and other technologies has had and will have a massive effect on the environment and could be the tools. Um, that uh, cause, well, the earthquakes are number one in, in the mention of Jesus in Matthew 24, but it's also in the book of Revelation. The pushing towards extinction, environmental extinction level events. So it may be that those are the things that help bring that about. Regardless of the means, Jesus spoke what actually will be occurring. He was asked the question, and when you begin to read Matthew 24, and you come all the way down, and, and, and then you're going to finally read Jesus speaking, when all of these things are on the field, when all of them are there, then you know the end of, is near. And I'm just going to tell you that I believe that all those things written from the moment Jesus began to speak all the way down to that verse, that they are there. And, and all the prophecy teachers across the nation, and all these... 55 conferences that we've gone to, listening to the book authors and theologians and prophecy theologians and so forth, they all believe it's near, very near, all of them. When systematic biblical prophecy is looked at, the pieces being fitted together the way they should be, paint the picture and light up your eyes to see not only what God's going to do sovereignly, and our salvation, our glorification, our seeing God face to face, the home of the righteous, and the unshakable final kingdom to come, eternal kingdom. Uh, there's our hope. There's our, there, this is unshakable. But it also gives the insight to the, what's going what's to happen to mi- hundreds of millions to billions of people. And, and, and then it gives the insight, deep insight, into the cause, the satanic, I call it this, the sequence of satanic evolution. Because that's been going on. And, and if I just even study the last 80 years, we see this layering, this spiritual layering, this deception, this counterfeit side, uh, signs, wonders, miracles, false prophets, doctrines of demons, all of that collectively has brought a seduction to billions and it's by design. It's by intent of the dark side's presence and work. It's part of their plan. So when I look at all of this, I'm saying that the, the abyss will be opened. Uh, the, uh, uh, the Antichrist will be apocalypse. There will be an unveiling of his presence. It means he'd already be here, but just an unveiling of his presence. The false prophet, Revelation 13, going to ascend from under the earth, come up. He's going to be unveiled to the world. He's going to do more supernatural events than anybody else ever other than Christ that will bring power to persuade billions do you understand how huge that is? To me, that's that's bigger than CERN. Bigger than the concerns of CERN is Revelation 13. Because the false prophet rising from under the earth, it's an anabano, ascendancy from under the earth. That's where he is hidden, most likely, until the day comes. And uh, he begins. And what he begins is the most supernatural release of dark side deception that has everything to do with the initiation of the mark of the beast and the image of the beast and the forced worship worldwide of the Antichrist. It's huge. Now, I'm going to tell you that I feel on the basis of biblical prophecy, let alone the undergrounders that I've researched. I mean, again, the books, the people, the engagement, Europe, Germany, France, you know, all, you know I could talk about all of the uh, research on that side tells me we're at the very near door years from, the, from all this occurring um, shortly. Uh, 
Could it be six months, ten months? Yeah, but it, 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 it's it's the 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 eruption of the dark side on a global scale is not dependent on them. It's not dependent on men. It's not dependent even on the church. It's dependent on what God sovereignly has done with the restrainer. So, big key factor in all of this is the brilliant revelation of the restrainer being put in place without strain from God. The restrainer, is it the Holy Spirit? Is it an angel of God? It doesn't say either way. It could be either one. Simply put, the restrainer, and you can do a little study on the Greek word restrainer, meaning something with a superior force. What is the restrainer doing? He is restraining. Look at the context. And here's what I want to go to really quick. Uh, this is Second Thessalonians 2. And here's, it's all about the end of the age. It's all about the second coming of Christ. And it begins, the Spirit of God begins this way. Verse 1, chapter 2. Now, brethren, concerning the coming, that is the parousia, of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to Him, we ask you, listen carefully what the Holy Spirit says, verse 2, not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ has already come. So there is a, um, you got to understand the confusion comes from the dark side. The confusion comes from the uh, world looking and calculating and crunching and, and, and then the, the spiritual counterfeits and purposeful creation of confusion. God's not the author of confusion, by the way, the Bible teaches. So verse 2 is very clear. Don't be soon shaken. Uh, believers, knowing the word of God, it strengthens you. Knowing the indestructible nature of your salvation, of the coming of Christ, of the glorification to come, of what God is in charge of, should make believers stand big, huge, tall, spiritually, the real illuminators of the end of the age. Philippians chapter 2. Remember? A light shining in the dark place, holding out that word of life, the prophecy part of it. Verse 3, 2 Thessalonians 2, the command is, the command very strong in the Spirit of God, listen to it, listen to it, let no one deceive you by any means. For that day will not come, and this is very emphatic in the original, it's not going to come unless the falling away of this, this apostasia, the idea is the revolt, the rebellion, will occur. That's what the word in, in Koine Greek uh, in, in its historical grammatical use, meant a rebellion, a revolt, an event. And the man of sin or the man of lawlessness will be revealed, the son of perdition. He's doomed to destruction. So though it gives this insight of what's to come, it gives the insight of what's going to happen to the worst of the worst of what Satan's going to bring, God brings a word that talks about its destruction. But you and I are commanded to let no one deceive you by any means. Now, in the context of uh, 2 Thessalonians 2, you can read chapter 1, the second coming of Christ. It's uh, astounding again. But here are some of the details. This helps us shove away the confusion, come back to the clarity of Scripture and biblical prophecy and teaching. All the prophets did in the past was look Scripture upon Scripture upon Scripture upon Scripture. That's where I'm at. Though I will read and discern and look at and listen to and look at all these other things out there, uh, it is not my grid. It is not my ground, my foundation. Scripture upon Scripture upon prophecy upon prophecy, guided by the Spirit of Christ. An example of 1 Peter 1, verse 10 and 11. Well, 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 3, Let no one deceive you by any means. For that day, that parousia, and our being gathered, when I come on, two things. The great rebellion, the revolt, and the unveiling, the apocalypse, anthropos and amos. Now, he's the, the son of perdition. The, he's doomed to destruction. Uh, he opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he's God. Now, that's his own self-declaration. Now, here's the important thing I want to just emphasize concerning the sequence of the events. You're right, the Antichrist is coming. 
he will there will be an unveiling of him there'll be an unveil well there'll be a, a release of a great revolt a great uh, rebellion and then a a, rev, a, 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 a a revelation of his presence you gotta realize behind the scenes he's probably been very operative and once he is released uh he'll have a, a seven year period as a whole and by his release to the world, more destruction will occur in that seven-year period than in the history of the world's events. You're talking billions dying with the feeling of human extinction and uh, the environmental sense of God having to sovereignly stop the extinction of the planet environmentally. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 5. Do you not remember that when I was w w still with you, I told you these things? In other words, verse 5 is all about, don't you remember the Scripture? Don't you remember the Word of God? Don't you remember what I laid out? And this is important. It's, it's kind of a rebuke to the believer that has fallen into a shaky, confusing, oh, I don't understand all this. The way you can burn through all of the things being pumped out there is Scripture upon Scripture, prophecy upon prophecy just like the prophets of old, 1 Peter 1, verses 10 and 11. Verse 6 here in 2 Thessalonians 2, And now you know what is restraining, that he, the Antichrist, may be revealed in his own time. Now this is vital because we now have this picture, the restrainers in place. What is he restraining? He's not restraining God. He's not restraining the second coming of Christ. He's restraining the apostasia. He's, he's, the, the, he's restraining the great revolt and the revelation or the unveiling, the apocalypse of the Antichrist. He's holding it back. He's restraining. And now you know what is restraining, that, that, he, that he may be revealed in his own time. Now listen to verse 7. This is the Greek word mysterium. For the mystery of lawlessness, or the mystery of iniquity, is already at work. Now the word at work, or gaze, meaning supernaturally operative. This is the global collective in the sky, Ephesians 6, the um, principalities and powers all the way to the ground. The collective of the fallen angels, demons, all of the species of the dark side involved in the agenda. The mysterium, that's them. In connection with the human counterparts that were that have been, well, sucked in, drawn in, embracing the, the Lucifer lie. So the mysterium, the mystery of lawlessness, the mystery of iniquity is already at work. For he, referring to the restrainer, he, who now restrains, will do so until he is taken out of the way. The phrase taken out of the way means there's going to be an instant moving out, uh, taking him out of the way. That's why some point to that being an angel. It doesn't say in the context whether that's God the Holy Spirit being the restrainer or an angel of God being a restrainer, but it is a reference to He who now restrains, that is, with superior force, holds back the global satanic agenda. He will do this until He's taken out of the way. Verse 8, And then the lawless one will be revealed. Quickly, it says, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Now, this is very clear to me. That's why I'm saying that CERN's not going to open the abyss this month. Maybe later on down the road, that's going to be the tool. But not this month. Because the sequence of the events have not yet occurred. When you go to Revelation 8, we read about, quote, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Well, then you begin to read you know, chapter 8. You're at the opening of the seventh seal. And then the angels begin to do their work in Revelation chapter 8. You begin to see that, again, one by one by one. Here's what I want you to remember. You've got to go back to Revelation 6. When the seals are opened by the Lamb of God, by the sovereign Lamb of God, the, the ripping open, uh, the opening of the revelation of the dark sides and, you know, agenda. 
Come and see White Horse. Come and see Red Horse. Come and see Black Horse. Come and see the green, uh, greenish pale horse. Each one is prophetic drama. It's prophetic picture, but it is communication. Without question, White Horse, Antichrist, and all that he is. The, the moment he's released, the thing that occurs is, come and see the Red Horse. It's immediate. It's the, the, and look at the Red Horse prophecy. On a global scale, a chaos of slaughtering, Greek word svadzo, a, a kind of ritualistic slaughtering of the human race. Most Christians have never even heard a sermon on the Red Horse. Go back and read it. And what happens immediately at this massive chaos slaughtering, undergrounders have called it the Black Awakening, is the black horse, the collapse economically, and then the, the pale green horse, the one-fourth of mankind, and you read about all the, the events there. And then you've got to continue to go. There's a sequence of the events. Everybody wants to know when it occurs. Well, when listen, when the restrainer is removed the entire world's going to know. Because at the moment the Antichrist is released uh, to move forward, it is without question that, uh, you know, the, we only have four minutes here now, he is the cause behind the chaos. He's, he, he's behind the, the collapse. The, the four horses are, are massive biblical communication of global level events that, um, well, that push the world towards uh, the feeling of human extinction, because billions will die, the feeling of uh, environmental destruction, and that's that's not even that doesn't end there. It moves on, and more occurs, and and earthquakes and devastation, and and we haven't even mentioned the fact of the the two witnesses that'll be there for three and a half years unleashing, and then who kills them, and the earthquake that occurs, and then, uh, so I'm saying that that in in my view of the timing of the abyss. You're talking at least, uh, at the very least, right after the middle part. Revelation 9. And the fifth angel. This is after the seventh seal. Seal 1, seal 2, seal 3. So the events, um, you're talking time and all that has to occur. And then finally the seventh seal. And then the angels. And now the fifth of those angels sounded. And here's what, the, here's what John says. I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key, that is, rights, authority. Could that mean that he gained it through the technology that they developed? Sure. But the literal emphasis is verse 2. In reference to the one that fell from heaven, and he opened the abusos. He did. And there rose smoke from the pit of the, the abyss and smoke of a great furnace. The sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the abyss. And there came out of the smoke, here's how John sees it, like locust. If you've ever seen a picture on television of the swarm, the entities contained in the abyss, literal Greek, Greek, biblical Greek, here's what it says. They come down, like as coming out of the, out of the skies, they're coming down upon the earth, and they unleash the torment. So all those playing the game of using occult means to gain disclosure, one day disclosure will come. It is not what you have hoped for. The deception will lead to destruction as it was in the garden, as it is every time Satan engages through deception, through straight-on promises that always end up being the lies. Once he hooks you, what are you going to do? The Savior of humanity, Jesus Christ, came to destroy the works of the devil. Listen, there is uh, forgiveness and freedom and power and release from his work, Satan's work, when you come to Christ. He fears Christ and what he did. Jesus destroyed and made a public um, a spectacle, literally, of the dark side powers by his death and resurrection. Christ is coming. That's why the dark side is in this, uh, filled with wrath, knowing the time is uh, short, Revelation 12, because of Revelation 19. 
Christ is coming. Revelation 20, Satan is bound. The assurance to the believer, the indestructible nature of God's work in your life, he's working in you, and he wants to work through you. The other side of this, we got to reach the world. And as you're listening, are you saved or not? Do you know the living Christ in his presence and power or not? Come to Christ. Ragged Edge Radio broadcast. We're at the end of the hour. This is Russ Isdar. Good night.